commences in just a few minutes, and um, it really, like I said in kind of the title, it all comes down to this. It all comes down to today's sale to see how we did with the purchase of this house, with the purchase of the contents that were inside of it, I should say. Um, a, a lot of sorting, a lot of cleaning, a lot of uh, stress, and a lot of hard work. And, uh, you know, you do these auction sales and you really hope that it's going to uh, work out in the end. It's, it's a gamble. It's a risk like anything. So you guys are going to be with me today to see if that gamble ended up paying off. Uh, if you want to watch the auction or uh, I'll be live streaming right now, but if you want to see for yourself how things are going, you can log in to kauctions.ca and you can look for the curiosity sale that's listed right now. It'll say live now. You click on that. It's very easy to get going. Uh, they just put a $1 hold on your credit card, which will come back to you if you don't buy anything. So there's really little risk. Uh, the reason they do that is just to confirm that you're a real person. And if you do place bids, that uh, you do have a verified form of payment. So um, the uh, auctioneer, uh, they are going to have a live auctioneer later today. And I'm going to be with you guys for a good portion of this auction today. Uh, this will probably be a, one of the longer live streams that I've done. <laughs> Um, I'll probably take a break for a little bit at some point and then I'll come back on and do like a part two or something when we get close to when the auctioneers are going to be on. Uh, can you guys hear me okay for, for starters? I, I don't know. Uh, I'm using a external microphone right now and I don't know if you can hear me all right. So give me a thumbs up or give me a, give me something if you can hear okay. You guys can hear me all right? Okay, perfect. Uh, all right. Okay. Let's get this camera turned around here. We have um, basically this this auction. I'm going to try and get that centered a little bit better there. There we go. Something kind of like that. Does that work? I feel like I got to straighten that screen out. That's the OCD in me trying to get that perfectly level. Okay. All right. Boy, today is... Um, it's an exciting day. It's also a uh, nerve-wracking day because, you know, it went through all of this effort and all this work to uh, make this auction come together. And you um, you just don't know how something is going to end up uh, until until it's over and until it's done. Um, we have invested close to $25,000 in, in the uh, purchase of the contents of this property, which I basically bought, as you saw, sight unseen. Uh, just from skimming the surface, I took a, a wild guess and I hope that uh, our predator friend, <laughs> that always sounds bad when I say it, the predator statue, you know, from the movie, <laughs> not a friend of mine who's a predator. <laughs> uh, we hope that he does well. Oh, incidentally, um, if the screen is appearing fuzzy at your end, you can likely change the resolution to uh, 720p or higher or uh, 1080p if you can do that. That'll get you a little bit clearer image. I, maybe I can back this up a little bit and maybe that'll help um, bring that in a little bit too. Oh, look, a, a thing sold already. Something sold. Okay, so uh, it looks like the auction has begun. There is no live auctioneer right now, so bids are just going to come in by the internet. So first item that sold was the large figural romantic style lamp. That one went for $90. Uh, the wooden ship just went for $15. We got the antique wooden metronome, which is currently bid to $70, and it looks like it's going up to... Uh, oh, is there... There is an auctioneer right now? Hang on. Let me click the button and see. $80 bid on that right now. Am I missing out on auctioneer? Oh, look, there is an auctioneer. Oh, she's just moving really fast. Hey, we got a lady auctioneer. Lots of lots. Can you guys hear her okay? 12 foot python snakeskin. Make some very long pointy boots. <laughs> there it goes. Yeah, why this music stein? Uh, had to make the auction too much feedback. 
Okay. Is it okay? Is the sound okay at your end with the auctioneer going? I don't want it to uh, affect with the speaker too much. We'll get some of these bugs worked out. Antique dominoes. Some early domino sets were actually ivory. I don't believe those are. They might be bone though. This is a antique spoon made from a tortoise shell. You can see like um, some of these items, you just get an idea that it's going to be more interesting to put it out separately rather than in a box. Cool 50s martini shaker. Okay, the sound is going okay, it sounds like. Uh, if the screen is showing as blurry, you might be able to make an adjustment at your end. It's showing as clear on my end, but uh, also with a live stream like this, sometimes there's a bit of... Uh, a bit of fuzziness. There it goes. Elephant skin chisel and a little bowl. There we go. I think there's a piece of paper sitting inside of this vase right now. There's no damage to it, but I can see sometimes if they leave a little thing like that in there. Yeah, there's a tag or a piece of paper on the next. Oh, that's the that's the auction tag on the inside. That's what I'm looking at. Dave says the thermometer would be good for Strong's garage. Yeah, Matt and Jim probably like that. They're they're definitely Ford guys. I always wonder if something like this would go to somebody as a Christmas present who's a police officer, just kind of a cute little thing to put on a shelf. That is actually a nice silverware set. If you even if you just need cutlery, that's a pretty fancy set for forty bucks. <laughs> $40, Boy, you're going to have to, if a person's bidding, they're going to have to place their bids fast. They're moving quick. No second guessing the bids on these guys. Probably, there's, always a, there's always a demand for cast iron frying pans. $45, $7807. 3019, 45, 50 on the depression glass. 45, then the 50, dollar now. 45, then the 50, 50, 45, 50, 45, 50, 45, 50, dollar now. 45, then the 50, 50, 45. Uh, Nathan Glass says, link to the auction. It's just kauctions.ca and then look for the curiosity sale. My apologies. 45, 75, 42. 30, 20 on the poker set. 30, not 35. The auctioneer is going fast. I, I'm not so worried about her going fast on these sort of items. I would worry more about her going too fast if it were the uh, when we get to the jewelry and you know some of the more expensive items. This is uh, Michael Hutchins is the guy from NXS, I believe. There it goes. Ask the 8-Ball says, I can't wait to see what Predator goes for. Last time I checked, Predator was at $2,100. He'll be, he's definitely uh, a big draw for this auction. I think every single item that you're seeing is something I had to hand pick out of that house. Sort in my garage, haul off to auction. Then I had to get photographed. There's probably a little bit of a delay on her voice because she's saying sold before people even have a chance to bid. There it goes.
So $45, 75, 78, 30, 27, 10, 12 and a half. 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 10 minutes, 12 minutes, 12 minutes, 10, 12 and a half. 10 minutes, 12 minutes. I guess if you're not seeing a bid within the first couple seconds there, she just moves right along. So $10, 7966. 30, Little 30, silhouette 30, pictures. 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, 30, uh, yeah. Deb Brown says Predator is lot 3,600 or so. So there's a long way to go. Mind you, at this rate, um, they usually try and do about 100 lots in an hour. We've done 30 lots in eight minutes. <laughs> so we might, we might get there before too long. Caster usually takes, um, for most people, around 25%. I get a better, uh, Sean says, what's the rate? Um, I get a little bit of a uh, reduced rate because I bring a lot of volume to them. But um, for me, it's worth it because they do all receive the payments, store the items for me. It's a good relationship. And they definitely earn their portion of it, too. 30, 32, uh, 70, 80, whole bunch of new old stock vintage beanie babies. Oh, there's the hanging swag lamps. I knew those would be popular. I love these old swag lamps. See, the bids are coming in. If they see the bids coming in, they'll give it a couple extra seconds, I think, here. $130. Sold $130. $130. Bucks. Thank you. There's a little kid sewing machine in the case. There are, uh, they do have to move relatively quick on an auction sale like this. Um, the reason being that there are almost 1,600 lots today. If they went at too slow of a pace, um, that would be, well, that, that would be, a, you know, <laughs> potentially like a 15 hour auction. Um, so we don't want to, you know, see it go that long. So. A little bit of speed is okay. Just the bidders are going to have to adjust and move fast. 100 bid. 110. Marta watching from Italy. Buongiorno, Marta. Buongiorno, Principessa Marta. There's the funny little Jimmy Carter peanut radio. Of all the weird things that they made. <laughs> Collectibles here, 30 bit, not 35. 30 bit, not 35, 35, 30 bit, not 35. Last call, 30 bit, not 35. There it goes. Um, 12 and a half, 15. Hi, Alexander. Here, my hometown in the window of a tattoo shop is a predator, same scale, similar to the one in the auction, slightly different, but direct from the man who made it. Neat. I wonder if it's the, uh, wonder if it's the same. I'm not tracking the uh, grand total just yet. The auction's doing that for me. I believe we have one of our uh, viewers at home who's tracking. $35, 7746, 30, uh, this is in Canadian funds. Yeah, if you want to see what it is in US, I can actually, where is my mouse? I can switch it over to uh, US. Uh, which I'm not going to do, I guess, right now. But anyway, you can switch the currency over to US. This is all in Canadian funds right now. The, the one thing I like about doing these sort of auction updates, see, you can just pick your currency right here, whatever you want. Whatever currency you want, you can switch it to so you can see what you're viewing it in. But we'll leave it in Canadian for the purposes because she's going to be talking in Canadian funds anyway. But uh, one thing I do like about doing these sort of videos is that you get a chance to see what the market is sort of dictating on certain items. And hello from Tel Aviv. Oh, James says, how did, how did I get that to pop up it's right boop, right there that little word says canadian you just click on that and uh, it'll bring up every currency you can possibly imagine so if you want to see what stuff is selling for in us or australian or whatever you can do that too so hand painted figure bust i don't know no bids on that one yet let's see if we get ten dollars bid on that guy that is a character i think that's a dickens character oh there we go Azerbaijan, Tel Aviv, we have everybody from all over the place on right now. 
$10.71.50. Oh, and here's Sherlock Holmes coming up. Sheer64 says, hi, Alex. Hello, back at you. We got folks in the UK, Austin, Texas, Romania. The Dickens, you say? <laughs> yeah. One, the antler carving set had no idea how much it was going to cost me. <laughs> well, congratulations. And I think that... Um, $30, you know, hopefully this stuff will mail out and get to people in time for Christmas. I really hope so. But at very least, you know that it's on its way. Uh, Mary Pat says, you must feel good knowing that this is all done and, and just about over. Yeah, it was, uh, it was uh, a lot of stuff. In terms of volume at an auction house, this house yielded probably one of the better hauls of sellable small items that I've had. I'll turn that down a little bit for a second. This house, um, when I went through it first, I really couldn't see because everything was boxed up. But because they were kind of antique dealers or collectors themselves, they had a lot of good sellable things. And um, a lot of times when I do an auction sale like this, I end up having to group lots, like boxes of things together just to kind of uh, make it make sense. But in, in this sale, um, there's just a lot of neat individual items that we can put up for sale, you know, like from dolls like this porcelain doll that we have right now in the bathtub. Uh, and that's cotton that makes it look like bubbles, incidentally. So uh, anything from the, the dolls to the pipes to books. And then, of course, we ended up finding the, uh, the safe full of jewelry, which will be coming up later on. And um, so far, the jewelry and the Predator are the highest items in the auction sale. Yeah, this was this James said James Coolman says from the videos it seemed like a higher ratio of sellable goods. It was. It ended up being kind of the equivalent of buying an antique store or a secondhand store. Um every almost everything they had in their house was sellable or donatable. Um although there was a a large number of things that were um that went to the dump. Um that was primarily, you know, empty boxes or or papers and things like that. Uh the uh, Predator uh, is coming up a lot around lot 3,600. So that's going to be, um, you know, about 500 lots away from here. So there's a, way, a ways to go. Uh, but yeah, sometimes you just really have to take, a, uh, take your best guess at a property. And I think I said in the first video when I was in this property that... Um, uh, oh, Bluebird, thanks for the update. See, we're, get, we're already at $15,000 sold in the first... 50, is that true? 50 items we bought? No, we couldn't have been 15 grand already. If that was if that was true, we've already got our money back. So that now we're into the profit zone right now. But uh, as I was saying, when you get into a property like this, you kind of have to scan. And I guess that's the nice thing about doing this for a while is that it's almost like understanding the psychology of the person who um, who used to live in the house without knowing them. And as soon as I saw that predator statue in the garage, I thought anybody who's going to spend 10,000 bucks on a predator statue probably would have had some other interesting things in their house. And um, it seemed to have been right. Crystal Lynn Sloan says, this is my very first auction. So exciting, learning lots. Yeah, I don't know about the auction houses in your area. Um, a lot of cities, most cities, in fact, uh, no, the bidders can be anywhere in the world, Mary Pat. Anywhere in the world can bid. If you are anywhere, um, I can't. Uh, I can't ad adjust too much here at my end. Um, it might be a tiny, a tiny bit blurry. It's showing as clear on my end here, um, but you might be able to adjust the uh, settings on your screen by either uh, refreshing or changing your settings to uh, 720p or higher. Everything is getting sold today. Yes. Oh, and I had a question from Germany. I don't know if the question already popped up, but what happened with the Mountain of China? It's here in this sale. The Mountain of China, I just put it out by pallet folds of China, just pallets of China. Um, the only thing that I sold separately out of the China was the um, was the uranium glass, uh, which we ended up selling for $650 for the uh, bin of uran uranium glass that we had. So that was, uh, that was a good chunk that came back from that. Oh, somebody said they have this little, uh, the, they said they have, I have this ashtray. Um, let's see. Oh, well, uh, so Lewis is saying it's uh, clear at his end, um, but YouTube will default to medium resolution, so you might have to change it higher. Hey, the uranium, uranium glass is really cool. 
you know, it wouldn't, it, some things like that just will always be, um, always be good. April says, uh, my opinion, auctioneer is going too fast and not giving people time to bid, maybe. I think, uh, like I said, I'm not too worried about the amount of time that she's spending on this particular stuff because we have almost 1,600 lots to go to. And I get it. They don't want to be here for 16 hours straight. That's a long day for anybody. Um, so I think that if the bidders want something, they're going to have to move fast. Oh, here's a nice little ornate, uh, this pink glass bowl with the lid. That's a, that's a pretty little dish. I imagine the hard candy in there, you know, the type that sticks together like your grandma would have. <laughs> that's what needs to go in that. <laughs> or scotch mints. Oh, Platte Valley corn whiskey jug. Um, I could, uh, Jack says, uh, I'm sure you can't control how fast she's going. Um, I can't really, but I mean, I could write her a message and say, would you mind slowing down a bit? But uh, I, I, where, where I will ask that or where I will kind of get to that will be, um, when we get to the really expensive stuff, that's where you wanted to give it a little time. So he said, I hope the, I hope the profits pay for a, a hands-free camera or GoPro. Um, I do have a GoPro. That's one of the most common things people say when I'm, when I'm filming. It's almost like, uh, it, it's almost, I wouldn't say funny at this point, but the amount of people that say, get a GoPro. I have a GoPro and I ha I've had a GoPro for years. The problem is, um, People will say use a GoPro and then I use a GoPro and then they go, I can't stand this fisheye lens. Sorry, I can't watch your channel. So then they get upset. The other thing is I can't move a GoPro around to film the way that I want to film. Um, the other thing is uh, people will say use a tripod, which I'm using right now. I have a tripod. Again, I can't move the stuff, move the camera around. Um, the issue is that I want to be the camera operator and the host at the same time uh, in order to show you guys what I'm seeing. So, you, so I can take you along for this adventure. Um, the way that I kind of need to do it. Um, so whenever I try and um, incorporate some of these suggestions, um, just as many people are upset by the changes as they are that would want me to move in that direction. So uh, there we go. A little ceramic, you know, girl with her pet unicorn. This is actually kind of a neat ornament, this rooster. I had uh, something like this came for, from, um, is it Portugal? That we had somebody, uh, we sold them an old car and they owned a winery or something. And they sent us a rooster like that from their country and, and some wine. Uh, question uh, out of interest, do you edit your own videos? What software to use? Yeah, I edit my own videos and I just, I use my Apple computer and I, uh, just use the uh, iMovie program that's on there. It's quick. It's easy. It uh, does what I need it to do. And it does the trick. Little John cigarette set. Compliment your bathroom. <laughs> By having uh, these weird little ashtrays. I don't get the purpose of this one. It looks like you would put your cigarette inside and then she would have smoke come pouring out of her bosom. It's a weird ashtray. <laughs> Um, they'll, somebody said, does she give a description of the items? In some cases, this belt is actually quite big. It's a really nicely made, um, leather weightlifting belt. I don't know that anybody would use it anymore, but it's a neat thing. Does anybody know what uh, Predator is at right now? I can't change out of the screen to see. Oh, uh, Crystal says, I hope you get your money back and some profit. We're already into profit now. We are in the profit zone now. Predator is still at 2100 Yeah, the python skin cowboy boots. Maybe that's what somebody's going to do with the python skin uh, that we got earlier. Maybe they'll make some boots out of it. I wasn't sure if I should put the boots up in the auction. I thought, oh, you know what? Somebody's going to think they're cool. And I was right. 
Alligator skin boots. Cowboy boots aren't inexpensive. They're actually really, really expensive. Will you consider doing lots of vintage clothing sometimes? Um, yeah, there, there wasn't a whole lot of vintage clothing at this last house, but if I do, um, if I do get another property that has, uh, vintage clothing in it, yeah, I would probably put some through for sure. Deb McDougall says, this is cool. Never watched a live auction like this before. It, it's, it is kind of fun, isn't it? Because you really don't know what something's going to sell for. Fancy cowboy boots, and you'll be teleported back. Power play hockey. See, the, the boots, I, I almost had them in a donate to a charity pile. I'm like, well, these are like brand new, and they're really nice. Glad that I did, because that was like, what, 500 bucks in cowboy boots that we got back? Uh, Linda says, do you know, donate the items that don't sell? Um, sometimes. But what will happen is uh, in a sale like this, probably almost everything will sell. If it doesn't sell in this sale, the auction house will try it again at a future sale. And if, if they try it at another sale or two and it doesn't sell then, then yes, I go and pick it up and I will take it to charity or try somewhere else to sell it. But um, yeah, in this case, I think most everything's gonna sell. But we did donate um, about 25 truckloads. $590 in boots, says Verity, thank you. Uh, we, we donated 25 truckloads to charity of good, sellable, usable items. 25 truckloads to support charities in our local area and to the uh, small town. Uh, no, I, somebody says Canada doesn't give donation tax credit. Not that maybe some would, but uh, it's not common. You basically just drop your stuff off. Uh, Miss Beasley hasn't sold yet, Lynn. So if you're interested in Miss Beasley, she's still available. The so years ago, oil lamps used to be quite expensive and not anymore. It's changed. This is actually a pretty big cookie jar. Uh, you can't really tell from the the picture, but the back of the tail comes off and it's uh, ah, it's kind of a neat thing. Um, I sometimes sell on eBay. Like if it's the right, you know, like I wouldn't put a, um, like a Rolex watch or something through this sale because I don't know that that buyer might be here because everything here is no reserve. Um, so I do have a few things on eBay, but typically not. How much is shipping the Predator Azerbaijan? <laughs> oh boy. Um, well, I mean, it's seven feet tall and about 350 pounds. So I'm guessing very expensive to ship Predator. Yeah, Predator is selling, the jewelry is selling later on, and we're getting to that stuff. Um, let me just scroll a little bit and see what's coming up. Disney playing card sets. Uh, incidentally, a lot of the dolls and things that I opened in the last few videos are going up for another sale December 18th. So we are, uh, let's see. Yeah, we've got a, a while to go. What I what I will likely do is I will um, I'll go on for about an hour right now. Oh, hey, Matthew Fox is with us. Matthew, I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. I know you've been busy doing your Matthew stuff and being the rock star that you are. He's one of our moderators who's been with us for a while. Somebody said, "How um, how long do you think the uh, auction will last?" Oh, Jim Gerlinski also says 350 pounds seems light. I don't know what it was, to be honest with you. I know that I was able to lower it down onto a dolly with Patrick and drag it into the back, but maybe it was more than that. It's awfully heavy. But uh, the auction, uh, to answer that question, the auction, um, they typically do 100 lots an hour. They are averaging right now about double that. So 1,500 lots, you would say probably about nine or 10 hour auction even then. 
give or take. No, Alice in Wonderland book has not sold yet. That's coming up, I think, fairly soon. I think we're getting into some books. Desert Storm trading cards. I remember those from the early 90s. Uh, Sunset Colored says, are all the lots in this auction mine? Everything in this sale is mine with the exception of some of the newer watches that are at the very end of the sale. Um, those were those were put on um, uh, by the auction house, so they added them into today's sale. Hello from North Ireland, Suzanne. Alex, what kind of project would you like to do after this? Um, that's a great question. I think at some point in the in the future, I'll probably want to do some sort of renovation to a building. It's just not great timing. Um, to to uh, interest rates are crazy, and uh, sales of houses are kind of slumping right now. So it's not a great time to be getting into any kind of big construction project like that. I don't know. I think over winter, I'm probably just going to um, tinker on some cars. Somebody said, uh, are you going to become Jay Leno? Well, uh, I don't need that many vehicles. Um, but, uh, you know, I'll probably tinker on some vehicles. Uh, I've got some old toys I want to restore around here. <laughs> I don't know. I'll keep myself busy. Uh, Eric says, can you leave the video up when you take a break? Yeah, sure, I could do that. Somebody, uh, Anna says she has a three and a half foot tall Mickey Mouse for 1976. That's pretty cool. I don't think I've seen one of those. Yeah, of course, the most auction houses take around 25% or so. And that's basically uh, their cost to, they have to hire the auctioneer, they have to pay people to take the pictures, they have to pay somebody to upload everything. Uh, that's to help cover a lot of their costs at the end of this too. Uh, Open House Texas says, so how do we bid? Uh, to bid, you go to a website called kauctions.ca. Bid on kauctions.ca and you log into the Holiday Curiosity sale and you can just start bidding on stuff. We're getting to the books. There's some good interest in the uh, early Alice in Wonderland uh, because of the illustrator. Hello from Lithuania. Can't believe that you cleared this house in a week. Yeah, it was a it was a hot mess. But that's the um, that's the advantage of having done this. Shipping to the U.S. seems confusing. No, it's very easy. Um, they basically, you bid on whatever you want. They try and put everything in one box and they charge you uh, actual shipping costs. Oh, here's the Alice in Wonderland. Boy, somebody's going to want to bid on this. They better get their bids in quick. Up to 200. This book is actually worth a few hundred dollars, likely. So even at 225 or so, it's still a little bit undervalued. There we go. 275. We got a runaway auction. Oh, will it crack the 300? Let's see. Somebody's going to click. There we go. 325, three and a quarter. Hello from Wales. Was disappointed that the loft, aka attic, as we'd call it, was empty. Um, I wasn't. I was pretty done with that house by the time I poked my head up there. I was relieved that there wasn't anything in the attic. <laughs> I just wanted to go home. I wanted to beat the snow, and I'm glad that I did. I'm glad that I beat the snow because the next week, um, 
it actually snowed really bad in that area and there was uh, I think a 40 or 50 car pile up on the highway so I'm glad that uh, I did I was able to get out of there I don't understand how shipping works it scares me to bid it's very easy they basically they pack everything in a box they weigh it they measure it and then um, that's how they figure out what the shipping cost is and they get a discounted rate so it's cheaper than whatever it would normally be it's just the same as shipping anything else it's not it's not complicated hello from the Czech Republic this is exciting never saw an auction before oh or never saw such an auction before hello back at you the Czech Republic Melissa and I have been to your beautiful country to Praha and uh, lovely folks lovely people beautiful country a lot of these antique books that we have were uh, wrapped in brown paper, so I couldn't actually see what the original covers looked like until I took the paper off. So when I took the paper off, um, that's when we were able to actually kind of see what was going down and uh, see what was happening. Um, yeah, you have to have a credit card to bid because they don't want people to bid on stuff and not actually pay for it. It's just a safety net that most auctions would put in place. Uh, the books date from the 1900s to the 1930s for the most part. And I think in most cases we put the, the year like this one's 1931. Really pretty artwork. Really lovely artwork on these old books. Great illustrations. And I think that's a, the allure, the appeal to some of these is just just imagine that sitting on your shelf with a few little keepsakes, just a beautiful little thing to add to your decor. Yeah, Jack says the big side, downside of eBay is the non-payers. Yeah, that does happen on occasion. <laughs> she says she needs the how to argue and win book. Uh, ice cream store is doing well. Uh, somebody said, how's the ice cream uh, shop doing? They've been good. Ice cream shop has been doing great. View masters are always popular. This is kind of a neat one because it has an accessory light that goes along with it too. So you, you, if you don't have a, a light source, you could actually, you know, be under your blankets in your fort and still be able to look at your view masters. <laughs> uh, it's just a cigarette maker. Pretty big one. Or other rolled tobacco product. No judging. <laughs> Hello from Acme, Alberta. Hello, fellow Albertan. Thank you for joining us. We've got people from all over the place, and it's always nice to see folks that are local here, too. Oh, it had a bid come in. Oh. You got to be quick on the bids today. Uh, Melissa Condello says, did you rent the other half of the store as well? Yes, we have a Colombian restaurant that is rented the other side. So my, my building is fully leased out. We have two tenants. And hopefully they'll be opening soon. They've been doing some major renovations inside my old store to uh, turn it into a functioning restaurant. Professional kitchen, uh, fans, fire suppression system. It is getting a... A real conversion right now. Hi from Holland. Can I ask if you sell outside US and Canada? Yes, anything that you're seeing on the auction today can be shipped. Anytime I do an auction, they'll ship this stuff anywhere. It doesn't matter where. It's just the really big stuff. Like if it's a piece of furniture or something, they typically don't like to ship that stuff really far. Um, but if you see things that you're interested in, yeah, they will mail it to you in Ireland or Holland or wherever you happen to be. So don't be afraid to put some bids in. This is why I use this auction company, is that they will ship worldwide. Many auction houses will only allow local pickup, and I think that's limiting. So I prefer to use an auction house that'll do worldwide shipping. I guess they'd ship to Antarctica. Why not? 
long now, 35, then a 40, 40, 35, 40, 35, 40, 35, then a 40 long now, 35, then a 40, 40, 35, 40, last call, 35, 40, sold 35 dollars, 81, 71. Uh, Alex, what item you're waiting for to come to the sale? Um, I'm, well, I'm kind of covering just the, uh, the auction in general, but I am, um, anxious to see how the higher end stuff like the, the jewelry and the predator do. Uh, Gordy Gordy says, uh, how much you reckon you're going to clear? We've, we've are, we're well into the profit zone now. I've already got my money back, so... Uh, everything is good, and um, yeah, we expenses are well covered, so we're doing okay. This is a neat piece because that is a very early. The very top says Coca Cola on it, um, so it's a Coca Cola branded soda pump dispenser. That's before Coke was even. <laughs> that's a good deal for that. It's a neat Coke collectible. Somebody's in a Coke. Uh, Predator sells around lot 3,600 or so. Um, so we have a, a long time to go until that. Um, some, Lizzie says, the rooster from Portugal, you were supposed to place it at your front door with its backside to the door for good luck. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, do you find house clearances increasingly difficult? You seem to want to get out of that last one ASAP. Um, no, it's not that it's more difficult. The, uh, the problem with the last place was it was a long drive and we were about to, uh, we we're getting into winter here and, uh, driving, you know, a couple hours every day, uh, or paying for hotels gets expensive and, uh, on bad roads, it can be quite dangerous. So I was in a hurry to get out of the last place mainly because of the, the weather changing. On the cookie jar. Ten dollars on it now. You get ten, 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 ten dollars now. You get ten, ten, ten. How much five dollars on the cookie jar? Five dollars. Five dollars on it now. You get five, 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 five minutes and a half, seven, half, seven, ten dollars. Oh, there's lots of items left. There's uh one thousand three hundred and fifty lots to go, roughly. Actually, more like one thousand four hundred and fifty lots to go. So there's there's a lot of stuff left to sell. Thirty-one fifty on the little Scotty dog. Twelve and twenty-five thirty. Uh, Amit uh, says, what happens to stuff that doesn't sell? It, um, uh, generally everything does sell, so we don't have to worry about it. Um, if your screen is blurry, it might actually be the resolution at your end. Um, cause we're getting reports backed on that the, it, it's actually uh, clear, uh, for a lot of folks. Oh, Kelly says, uh, we thought you wanted out of the house early because it creeped you out. Yeah, actually, that didn't help. <laughs> that house was definitely putting off some creepy vibes. But I actually felt a lot better at the end. of The whole house felt transformed by the time we left with the light coming through and the sunshine coming in and we opened up the windows and got some fresh air and it felt so much better. Uh, Victor says it's crystal clear at their end. I've seen people take these brass torches and actually, uh, turn these into lamps. So there are people who will craft with these, uh, turn them into table lamps, desk lamps, do other things with them. We'll see what these Hudson Bay Crocs go for. I've seen them online on Etsy for like a hundred bucks each. So hard to say if somebody's going to bid, um, what I, I mean, person could ask whatever they want, but things will sell what they sell for. But it's more than I would have got at the bottle depot for him. Not that I'd ever take something like that to a bottle depot. Uh, Sarah, I think I said your name right, says that her image was blurry and then she changed it and now it's good. So, yeah, I put the somebody said that Ouija board was creepy and it's in the auction. Yeah, it is in the auction. The Ouija board will be coming up at some point. And hello from New Zealand.
As my mom lived in New Zealand for a short time when she was a child. A twist of fate. If they would have stayed there, I might have ended up being in New Zealand myself. Who knows? How is Patrick doing? Patrick's doing great. He's got a full-time job. Um, it's actually a job that he used to work at when he lived here before, so he got his old job back, and I think everything's going great. But I haven't seen him as much as I'd probably like to because he's been really busy. Somebody said I should put the, if you caught the story I told the other day where we got an accidental shipment to our house. They said I should put that through the auction, the mask. Now, I am actually just going to mail that to the person it's meant for. Um, like I said, I'm just waiting for my uh, money to be back on my card, and then I'll send that thing out. Do you have plans for a big Christmas? Well, we've got our tree up already. We'll probably have lots of family over, I hope, and some new family too. Uh, is there anything you would be super disappointed by if it sold very low? No. Honestly, um, I learned a long time ago not to focus on what the individual items are going for, but to look at the overall. Um, so the, the big picture was that this auction had to net me over $15,000 in pure profit just to break even. So once you pass that threshold, which we're well past now, um, then it doesn't matter what stuff sells for because um, it's not like I'm going to go and put it on my shelves at the store because there is no store anymore. So it's got to go. Uh, so money is coming back in. There's profit to be made. And I'm, I'm content and happy with that. So if some things are going for a better deal than others, that's fine. I, in fact, I hope that people watching are getting you know something that they like for a price that they think is fair. I'm happy to make the profit I need to make, and I'm happy for people to get uh, some profit as well. Or, or get a good deal, I should say. Uh, Galaxia says, I would email, I would inform the company that you received the mask and let them know. Um, yeah, I should probably, well, I have the person's address that the mask was meant for. So I think um, I'm just going to go to the post office and just mail it to them because, um, you know, I'm not going to sell that thing. <laughs> and it's not mine to sell. And obviously they paid a lot of money for it so they can figure out what to do with it. Uh, as long as I get my money back from the French car parts that did not arrive, that's all I care about. Blue Mountain Pottery. It's actually kind of pretty pottery. Watching the auction from Egypt. Is that it? I'm just surprised you so far for how much it's gotten. Um, well, I mean, the Alice in Wonderland book sold for $350. I'm quite pleased with that. Uh, a lot of these other items were sort of like, um, you know, it was quantity. You know, I knew that they'd kind of be 10 to $30 sort of items, but there was a, like 1,500 of them. So I thought, okay, well, that you're playing the odds of quantity, really. Um, so for some of this stuff, no, it's fine that it can go for whatever it goes for. Somebody's on from Norway. How do you say a hello in Norwegian? I don't even know if you could, how you type that out. I wonder if it's like hedge or... No, in Holland, it's huyudach. Hello. Hi. Okay. Well, that's pretty easy. It's funny that greetings are almost universal, aren't they? 
Hi or hello. I like that when you spell it out, it has the accent already built in. Vintage fountain pens like this are actually quite collectible. Those are these are items I probably would have done better with on eBay, frankly, because uh, Parker pens like that from the fifties go for pretty good money on eBay. Aloha from Maui. Anyang in Korean. Ohio Gazamus in Japanese. Uh, it's funny that the house owner saw you at Goodwill and felt bad you were giving the stuff away. I don't know if it was these. Was it this house? That happened in another house that we, we donated a bunch of stuff and they actually went and bought some of their stuff back that I donated that we were clearing out. In this place, I don't know. I, I hope they wouldn't feel bad that I was donating a lot of it. I mean, I don't want to, I didn't want to have an auction sale that was just full of regular dishes and things that, you know, there's sure there's some value there, but there's no point. I want to have an auction full of neat stuff, in my opinion. And hello from Poland. Hello back at you. Yeah, if I, somebody said, uh, you know, you do better on eBay maybe, but I don't want to ship 1,600 things myself. Uh, that would be like the rest of my life. That would take basically the, the process of clearing one of these houses out would go from being a, a month or two month pro process to probably being a four or five month process with shipping and everything. So I'm happy that the auction does this for me and I'm happy to pay their percentage because they do work hard for it. And um, I, I frankly don't want to deal with shipping. <laughs> it's one of my least favorite things to do is to sit there, pack something up, get it labeled and off to the post office. It just takes up so much time. Box of assorted antiques. There are a few boxes of things that somebody will have a little fun going through there and seeing what they got. Antique snips. I see a sad iron with its handle, a little coffee tin, some pictures. I used to like buying these sort of boxes when I was a kid. I'd go to auctions and I would like to buy those sort of junk boxes or assorted boxes of stuff and go through them. You couldn't buy that for 20 bucks at a store. All those... All those mugs. Um, the feed isn't blurry. I guess it just depends on where you are because it's very clear for a lot of folks. A lot of vintage medical diagram posters. That whole that whole roll is full of medical posters. Big ones too, which are pretty neat. Yeah, the auction house does all the shipping. It, it's really handy that they do that. Oh, yeah. It, uh, Jim says the boxes from farm auctions are fun. Yeah, those are fun. Far, I haven't... Jim Jim is a friend in Saskatchewan. You know what, Jim? We ought to go to a farm sale together at some point. I do like going to farm auction sales, you know, where they just pull random stuff out of barns or whatever and... Uh, Carlos says, do you happen to know what Pez dispensers are going for lately? I have over a thousand units with a ton of large ones. Um, I know that the earlier Pez are the most desirable where they, the footless Pez, those can be good. Um, in the fifties, they made a Pez gun, which can be worth quite a bit of money. Um, it looks like a little space gun and you shoot the Pez into your face. <laughs> um, definitely worth uh, checking online on some of the Pez uh, websites, see what they go for. Are you taking a break from buying inventory until after the holidays? No, not necessarily. It depends if the right thing came along, I would buy now. 
But you'll see if you continue watching the channel that um, we have an awful lot of stuff that we just purchased that's going to be going through auction for December 18th. So I have my work cut out for me to offload a whole other giant collection I just purchased. But I'm always looking for neat stuff. I don't think that'll ever stop. $12 for that painting was pretty cheap. Chris Johnson says Saskatchewan farm sale sounds like a Corblund song. I met Corblund once actually. I handed him an award. Vintage leather whip. Maybe this would be an accessory for that mask I accidentally got. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Michael says things are getting kinky up there. <laughs> Yep. Let's see. Love that trombone. Really early Niagara Falls picture. Photograph before it was really... Oh, Sheila, if you missed uh, the live feed I did the other day, you'll have to go back and rewatch it because I recount a story of... One of the worst postal mix-ups I think I've ever had. <laughs> you should have seen the surprise on my face when I pulled that thing out of the box. When you're expecting car parts and it's a, uh, well, when it's, when it's a adult mask. <laughs> uh. Wife's parents are having a large farm auction in Melita, Manitoba in May. I drove, I haven't been out to Manitoba in a little while. Probably not since I, I went out to get that, uh, that old Mercedes ambulance when I first started my channel. It's probably about five years or, or more. What? The, that pram sold for 15 bucks? That was cheap. For a nice buggy like that, that was low. Yeah, that was the pram we couldn't get out of there. All that work, it probably cost me more than $15 in labor just to get that thing hauled out of there. So they'll stuff Mickey Mouse in there, some Commonwealth Game Bears. Hey, the bin's worth 10 bucks. <laughs> Has the paper ephemera been sold? No, I don't think so. Not yet. Well, there's a battle happening over the uh, antique suitcase. It is a nice suitcase. People decorate with these. I've seen people actually turn these suitcases into guitar amps as well, which is pretty interesting. Yeah, they put the speakers in them and stand it up, put the switches all on there, get some tubes going. You can suitcase guitar amps. They're actually kind of a neat thing. I wonder why they didn't show a picture of the inside because it's full of antique ladies clothes. Sometimes that's a frustrating thing when the photographer, photographer might just be exhausted or tired or doesn't want to, but I don't think there's a second picture. Otherwise there'd be a scroll. But anyway, if a trunk is full of something, why not open the trunk and take a picture? Oh, well. Still going for an okay price though. I mean, I'm I'm fine with what it's selling for. Predator's at twenty one hundred still. So Predator hasn't jumped up that much yet. Two hundred bucks. We're getting some bids on this one. We're getting closer to uh, Predator. You can you can make a kick drum out of them too. A lot of buskers do that. I've seen buskers drum on just about anything. Buckets, pots and pans, whatever. <coughs> a friend of mine made a double bass of an old suitcase. That's cool. I've seen cigar box banjos. 
375 minutes, 3 minutes, 375, 300. 375 minutes, 3 minutes, 375, 3 minutes, 375, 300. Last call, and the contract. Maybe I should just be selling everything as a, as a sealed trunk. Maybe that's, maybe that's uh, marketing at its best there. Surprise. Is a BB gun? Oh, it's nice when something has the original box with it too. It's a very pretty little antique sewing machine. What's that? 150 bucks. A lot of times these were made in Germany, actually. I don't know where this one's made. I don't didn't think I saw a maker country of origin on it, but yeah, I'll make sure that I'm on for when the uh, jewelry and when Predator and all that comes up. In fact, I might just leave the stream running for a bit. Ah, uh, Francis says, I missed part of the last live feed. That's why I didn't hear the story about the mask. Yep. <laughs> oh, I had, uh, so I, I recounted that I was having a bad car day, that the fuel pump went on my truck and I, it was freezing cold, like minus 30. And I was not having a great time and I was getting very frustrated. I got the truck towed into the shop. I, I got it resolved. Um, and I was getting tires put on rims for my uh, Citroën. And I was putting those on at the end of that day. And when I stood up, I scraped a big line, a big scrape all the way up my back. So I ended that day. It just was one of those, a couple days ago was just one of those days where nothing was really quite going right. Oh, somebody says, I bought a uh, book from you. Oh, well, from North Norway, I bought a book from you several months ago. It went very well. well I'm glad. I'm glad that you got your items and, and you're enjoying them. Sure, we're a lot of uh, oil lamps in this house. Boxes and boxes of oil lamps. I did my best to try and find the shades that seemed like they went with them. The uranium glass uh, oil lamps are just stunningly beautiful. Um, you put that black light on them, they just glow. They're so nice. Or the person who bought them uh, was very pleased with them. So he said they're going to grab lunch and then come back because they uh, they have some items they're interested in that will be coming up. So there you go. Do you know that you've broken even or more? Uh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And yes, I did pay all my kids who helped out. I paid them. When Josh came out, uh, I just gave him a whole bunch of stuff. I always take care of people when we do these. Uh, we do these clear outs. I wish I was your kid. LOL. Oh, <laughs> he might be my dad's kid. <laughs> Uh, I wish I was kidding. I'm just basically waiting for the, uh, I saw that Ancestry was doing their sale on their DNA kits and Melissa and I look at each other every time. We're like, well, I wonder how long until we find out I got another sibling. Oh, somebody said you can't call it uranium glass on eBay because they'll they'll take it down. Um, you know, uh, what was the one thing that really annoys me with eBay? So I have a very nice watch. It's a bull. Uh, it's a bull of a chronograph, and it's brand new. I put it on eBay and they took it down and said, uh, you've been flagged for selling fake items. And I'm like, what are you talking about? Nobody's even faked that watch. Like, why would they say it's fake? So they took my item down and they gave me a strike. They gave me a warning on eBay saying that I was selling a fake item. I was so, so upset. I, I called them. I'm like, um, I said, Okay, I want to know why you think this is fake. What what do you know that I don't know that's telling you that this is fake? And they couldn't tell me. So I said, you know, they didn't even, nobody's replicated this watch, you know? And uh, so anyway, they're like, oh, I guess it must have just been an automatic thing that took it down. So they apologized and they, you know, but then I'd have to relist the thing. And so I haven't even put it back up yet for sale. But eBay annoys me sometimes. Twenty bid, 
I have no idea how Hans is doing. I haven't talked to him since he came and did the trees for me. I assume he's okay. He's a busy guy. He lives like, you know, an hour and a half or something like that from me. So I just don't see him that often. Oh, somebody said they got a strike on eBay for selling animals when they just used a picture of an animal to demonstrate that their camera lens that they were selling. I know, right? New old stock smiley face person we got taken down. Uh, the Smiley Corporation said it was a counterfeit. What? I know, like, Melissa had a coach purse that we bought new at the coach store, and we went to sell it on, um, it was maybe Facebook Marketplace or something like that, and they, they wouldn't let her post it because they said it was fake, but we bought it brand new at the coach store. That was annoying. Like, when you know you have something that's real, and they're like, don't you ever try and sell these fake things on our site again. I'm like, how dare you? <laughs> oh, I was mad. Oh, Bruce Maurer sent a $20 super chat. Thank you, Bruce. And if you send a super chat, you can ask, ask a question or something too, if you like. You know, I feel like I got to at least work for it, but thanks so much. Uh, it's called uranium glass because it has uranium in it. That's why it glows. Somebody said it's not toxic though. It's not a, it's no more toxic than a potato, somebody told me. Unless potatoes are really toxic. eBay is toast. Yeah, there's a lot of other ways to sell now. Um, I don't think as many people are using eBay as they used to. Speaking of which, I'm talking here and I'm not looking at the auction, but that 100-year-old uh, woodblock architecture set went for 90 bucks. That was pretty good. A whole bunch of concert DVDs. Oh, there was a lot of DVD movies and CDs and all sorts of stuff that we ended up putting through sale. Glowy glass. <laughs> Uh, Jonas wants to know, am I working on another hoarded house? We'll see. What, what I find is that these houses come around when the time is right. You know, the, the timing has to be right. It has to be the right property. I don't want to take on a place that's like going to actually physically harm me or the people around me. So I kind of, I wait until I get the right one. But I actually just went through another hoarded house, but they wouldn't let me film inside of it. And I bought a whole bunch of neat stuff, which you'll see in some videos coming out. I wish I could have showed you the inside because it was super fun to dig around and discover stuff. And uh, lots of really neat and collectible dolls and toys came out of it. You put that on the front of your Cadillac, you'd be Boss Hog. I heard that people still do that in Texas. Is anybody from Texas on? Can you verify? Are people still putting Longhorns on the front of their vehicles? I could, I could imagine on the front of a truck or something, maybe. I wouldn't want to get, I wouldn't want to be a pedestrian and get hit by somebody who's got horns. Like, how would you explain that? Like, well, it seems like you got impaled by bullhorns. <laughs> like, but I was crossing at an intersection. <laughs> oh, really says, yeah, they do, at least in Texas. There you go. Uh, Cindy Red Deer says, I tried to sell, thank you for the super chat. She said, I tried to sell my dad's motorized wheelchair on Facebook Marketplace. No matter how I word it, they wouldn't let me list it. Yeah, what are you supposed to do with your stuff if they won't let you sell the things that you own? That's, that's so bad. What are you supposed to do? Just go, go around like a town crier? Here you, here you, I've got a wheelchair for sale. I put these VHS players in because you know what? Where are you going to find another VHS player? Those things have gone the way of the dodo. And if somebody has a bunch of VHS. I'm headed to Houston for business on Monday. I'll let you know when I get back. Thanks, Chris. <laughs> Um, imagine bliss. Yes, we've made our, we've made our money back and we're into profit zone now. So anything, anything that's selling is now profit. We're good. I have 400 poodle girl says I have 400 pieces of Pyrex would love for Alex to go through my house when I'm dead. Uh, well, that's morbid. Uh, I'd prefer to go through your house while you're still alive, but, uh, you know, that's a, it's quite a Pyrex collection. 
I think in some small way, I'm glad that I get to be the one that goes through these properties and find these treasures of the person who passed away uh, that they treasured, that they kept, and to get them back out there in the market again. Is as you saw, um, if you watch that hoard uh, clear out that I did recently, um, you saw for yourself what happens when uh, a reseller like me isn't involved, a lot of stuff ends up in the dumpster. And it's, I can't, can't say anything about it. Like when I went to the house the first time, they were just throwing everything out. They'd already thrown out, I think, two or three roll off dumpsters full of stuff. And um, that's usually what happens. So when I get in there and I get a chance to save these things, and I really do feel like I'm saving these things from the, the you know, that Alice in Wonderland book was the bottom of a box of books in the garage. Maybe uh, nobody else would have been as patient to go through and discover it and find it. So it is uh, a lot of fun to do what I do. And uh, I feel like I'm saving a little bit of history and, you know, we're making some money at the end of the day too. So um, I, I'm, I'm glad I get to be in that position to uh, to find these things. For me, it's more important that, you know, you're, you're saving stuff from landfills where you can, getting it back out there. And, and the profit is obviously nice because it's a business, but uh, do you invest your profit somehow? Yeah, I mean, we uh, we uh, we have a, uh, two commercial buildings that we lease out that uh, we have to maintain. Um, it gives me uh, capital so I can reinvest back into um, more properties like this that might come along. So yeah, we, we definitely reinvest it. I mean, this is a business like any other business. You have to uh, have some margin. You have to... Uh, you have overhead, you got things you got to take care of. So, and somebody was saying old VHS tapes can be worth some good money. Yeah, that's true. Colored Pyrex is pretty and fun to collect. Um, I I have some colored Pyrex. Actually, the uh, the very first Pyrex, the uh, primary colored bowl set, is going through the next auction. Uh, Alice in Wonderland sold for three hundred and fifty dollars Canadian. For Gia, who was asking. Oh, the RCA portable stereo set is just that. It's a portable stereo. Um, it's uh, it turns into a little suitcase. These are speakers. There's your radio there. So you can take it to a party and turn on the radio and I guess dance in somebody's living room. <laughs> I think they're just moving fast because there's so many lots to go through today. April's got 18 types of guitars. That's a lot of guitars. I see some old Tonka in there. Look, I should have kept the Porsche. It's a little miniature. It's not quite like mine, though. I should be saying Porsche, I guess, if I'm saying it properly. I grew up in my area in Canada. Some words are said a little bit differently than elsewhere. Decal is said as decal. Um, I'm trying to think about other words. Oh, garage is garage. And I've, I've tried to correct myself so that I can speak <laughs> in a way that's um, less like my specific dialect here in Canada. So I'll say garage instead of garage. Um, but yeah, what was it going with that? What were we talking about? Porsche. That's where I started. Porsche and Porsche. The... Um, the Porsche dealerships here would say Porsche, and so that's why I started saying Porsche, but I guess truly it should be Porsche. What makes an item vintage? I don't know. Basically, a vintage item would be something that's probably about 20 years old or older. Something that's maybe out of production or something that's not around. Antique is 100 years specifically, but vintage is anything above that. It's like a collectible that is maybe out of production and... Uh, yeah, so antique is 100 years old or older. Vintage would be anything newer than 100 years. Oh, there's lots of DVDs going through. Whoever buys these, I think these are stacked double deep, so you're going to be getting a lot of movies. Fun for the holidays. 
Uh, the Beatle recordings that I got a while back. You know what? That's a great question. I don't, I don't remember if they even paid me. I'm going to have to get in touch with that company. Thanks for reminding me. What was the 1700 about? Ontario does not use your pronunciation. Of garage? Ontario says garage differently, or do you say garage? I'd say nearly everybody in my area says garage, like garage sale, instead of garage sale. So we're going through lots of uh, bins of DVDs and CDs and I mean 15 bucks for all that. You could probably go to one of those like places that buy, are there still places that buy CDs? Frankly, I prefer the owning something. I know it's easier just to have it download on your phone, but what if you ever lose your account? I was thinking about that the other day. What if like my Apple ID got lost and all of my music I've downloaded there is gone? Basket with portable Discman CD players. Well, there you go. If you just bought all those CDs, you might need that. Okay, let's see. What what are we coming up to here? I might take this as an opportunity to, to jump off and then come back on again in a bit. I'm just going to see. Oh, there's, a neat, there's the pink glass lady lamps are coming up. Ceramic ear. It's a neat lot of tins for somebody. Okay, when do we get into... Okay, there's some jewelry coming up. I'm scrolling on this side. I'm just kind of seeing roughly what lot number I need to be back for. Because I want to... Uh, I want to be back for the jewelry and I want to be back for Predator. And I think he's around lot 3600, I believe. I'm trying to get, oh yeah, so around lot 3600 or so. 3600. So I am likely going to take a bit of a break and I'm going to come back. Um, in about 300 lots. So that uh, that should give uh, myself and some other folks a chance to kind of log in. If you want to continue watching while I log off uh, in between this part one and then the part two video, um, you can go to the auction yourself um, and log in to kauctions.ca to continue watching what stuff is selling for. It's kind of neat because you get an idea of what, uh, what things are actually going for. Hang on. I'm going to flip this background. I'm going to talk to you guys now. <laughs> hey, I'm here. It's me. Um, so guys, I'm going to just log off for a little bit, just long enough to go have lunch with the family. I'm going to come back uh, when we get to lot 3600. That's when the really, uh, the big stuff like Predator and the jewelry and all that starts to go through. So um, if you want to continue watching at your end, or if you want to participate in the auction, which is happening right now, or not a bad idea to sign up so you can participate in future auctions, go to kauctions.ca and um, you can log in and uh, check out and see what things are going for. So I'm going to be back in a little while. Let's take a little bit of a break and we'll come back and we'll pick this up when we get to the premium stuff in this auction, which is uh, going to be happening in maybe about two hours time. So stay tuned, guys. This is a big sale, a big day. Let's see how it goes. Uh, I'll be back in a little bit. So stay tuned for part two, which will be coming up soon. Talk to you soon, guys. <laughs> Bye for now.